Oh, what's going on YouTube? One only extra. I'm here. Welcome back to the channel. We are outside Go AZ Scottsdale because they have a particular bike, particular Honda, that I'm going to test out, and you guys are really going to want to see this. So come on, check it out. Now I'm wanting to review the CBR 1000 RRR SP for, God, since I've seen it because of the reviews that people put out of it saying how hard it is, how tweaky it is, how twitchy the throttle is, and just the ride quality not being, you know, the best. But that kind of drew me in because the 1199 was described the exact same way. And when I rode that bike, I absolutely loved it. So I wanted to see what this was all about. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out here with the 2021 Honda CBR 1000 RR R SP. Uh, it is gorgeous to look at. The paint on here is very nice. We're going to hop on this bad boy, go for a little ride, and uh, kind of see what we think. We get your very, very initial impressions. The throttle is very smooth. It seems to have just a little lull, and then it'll start to pick up. The seat is actually very comfortable for a sport bike. <laughs> it's, let's not go crazy here. It's not the most squishy thing ever, but it's definitely comfortable. The quick shifter is very, very smooth. That was four thirds, second, first. For a quick shifter right out of the box, it feels fantastic. Oh my god! And we'll give it a little bit of beans here. It just pulls like a freight train. It pulls like a freight train above 8,000 RPMs. The tone of the motor just completely changes and becomes a screaming animal. Oh, there's a grand. There's a grand. <laughs> Wow. I don't want to say that it's dead below six grand because it's not. I mean, there's still some pull. I just think it's more docile. So, ironically enough, it'll be better on the streets because of it. It's a little bit easier to use at this speed at normal street speeds. But, like, when you really want to get on it, you've got to hang on because it, it's like a switch. It's there, it's there, it's calm, it's calm, and then bam, it's a monster. <laughs> I want you guys to listen to something. Jesus. All right, so while I figure out where the hell I'm at, uh, let's look at this thing a little bit. Because it is a stunning, striking bike. You know, I haven't been interested in CBRs for a good while. They just, I don't know, they haven't really done much for me. I don't like the way they look. The performance is again eh, okay compared to its rivals and i say that cbr now is a force to be reckoned with you know the quick shifter is very good the throttle is very good and like i said we'll talk about this more in a minute you know the very little bit of turning that i was able to do with some speed on it the cbr 1000 r is very confidence inspiring it likes being on the side of the tire the more you go over the more planted it honestly feels and i would love to get it to a more aggressive riding spot but for what i got to do today it's fantastic i this cbr is a very strong bike uh so that's kind of going to conclude my riding unfortunately i can only do about 10 miles and i think i surpassed that a smidge so i'm gonna have to head back but let's go back and talk about it i really want to go over this dash because there's so many really cool parts about this dash that uh, are unique to Honda. But I got a chance to ride this beautiful 2021 Honda CBR 1000 RR RSP. So many little tiny letters in there, but man, it is so fun. You see the smile? Yeah, that's from this. So this CBR Fireblade has 214 horsepower, about 83 pound-feet of torque. And what's really good about the torque, it's usable between 1,000 and 4,000 RPM, and it makes it sort of nice to ride around in the city you wouldn't quite guess that given the reviews i've seen where it's a peaky bike you have to have it revved but actually at the low revs it's great around town and then 
there goes the switch for the Jekyll and Hyde. Because 6,000 and above, you hear that note completely changing the exhaust and it just picks up like a freight train, but a smooth freight train. Like there's no cabooses behind pulling it. It's just, oh God. And part of the reason why this motor is so smooth and then spins up so quick is because it has titanium connecting rods. That's something that you see in like V4R and bikes of that caliber, which again, kind of lends to this $29,000 price point. You walk up to this Honda CBR 1000 RSP Fireblade, you notice there's no key. <laughs> there's no place to put a key. And this has irked so many people and I totally get it because you have to carry this around. Down here, <laughs> there's a push button. Why they decided to put one down there out of the way, I don't know. And to turn it off, there's a little dial over the start button and <laughs> it's kind of weird. You think you twist it and it says ignition, but if you twist it, it turns it off. I'm like, wait, so does it turn it on? Does it turn it off? I don't. It's weird, Honda kind of made that not the most intuitive. <laughs> so now as we go through the dash here, there is a lot to get through, so sit back, relax. There is so many menus, so much adjustability to this. Check this out. As you turn the bike on, you see the CBR logo come up and then it goes straight to the default dash, which is really a simple layout. You have miles per hour on the right, your tack obviously in the center with your gear. The CBR has three riding modes, track, sport, and rain. And within each of those, you can actually adjust your power mapping, your torque mapping, and all of your wheelie control and engine braking and whatnot. But what's really cool is there's eight levels of adjustability to that torque control, and then there's five different power maps, which is pretty awesome. Now to actually adjust between the maps, you would think you just hit up or down on the little buttons there on the left handlebar, but you actually have to hold up and then it'll go to the next one or hold down. That might be a little tricky if you try to do that on the fly, which holds true to trying to get to the menu. You actually have to hold that little thumb switch over to the left for a few seconds for it to go into this really crazy menu section. And as you see, when you go to the function, you have your riding mode, which further breaks down how you want to set each riding mode to your specific settings. Suspension aid mode automatically adjusts the dampening depending on what your riding conditions are. You also see brake, ACC, and corner, and what those do make it so that your braking is more smooth, your acceleration is smooth, like say if you're in the rain or something like that, and cornering, again, if you're leaned over, it'll apply the power smoothly. Suspension end mode is your manual mode. You can manually set how you want the debris bound and compression to be. It's perfect if you set, want to set your suspension up specifically for you at the track. The quick shifter. You obviously, there's bikes that you turn on a quick shifter on or off, or if you just want it up or you just want it down, this not only allows you to turn it up or down, but it also allows you to make the shift softer, medium, or hard. The steering dampener used to just be auto or off. Now you can adjust whether you want a soft, medium, hard. Go into ABS mode. This is honestly probably the least amount of options as far as the modes go. You have track and sport. What's really cool about the rev indicator, not only can you set the shift point, which is you know pretty common nowadays, but you can also change the brightness of the rev counter. <laughs> and then you can change the intervals that you see in the rev counter. Next we have start mode rev, which might be a little misleading, but what that means is your launch control. And I don't know if I want to have this thing pinned at 6,000 RPM and then sort of let the clutch go. That might be a little now, sketchy. Just the function and the adjustability within the bike wasn't enough. Well, now you get to change the displays. You can name them. If you want to change them, so you have three different settings here. You see, like I said, the default with the round rev indicator. Now, on the mechanic display, it really just gives you some of the pertinent information you'd want. Now, as you see, these are pretty standard options. The brightness of your screen, you can change it. Info, you can actually put the grip angle as one of those info things that you have on your main screen. And it's really cool that you can adjust and have these different information layouts depending on, you know, what section you're in. And then, of course, you can name your bike. That's <laughs> such a fun touch. I love how in depth this motorcycle goes into all of its settings. As we just saw, this suspension, the electronic, there's so much you can do with it. It's absolutely incredible. The technology that's in these bikes nowadays is what really gets me excited. And this dash rivals what this new BMW S1000RR actually has. That dash was the pinnacle. The choices and the way you can change the display in the BMW S1000RR, that's what everybody was trying to get to. I think the way that Honda set this dash up easily matches in the adjustability. I mean, to be able to change your quick shifter from medium hard to soft, 
that's just another level. Now you notice this beautiful side panel here. The paint is metallic, it's gorgeous, but really it's what's inside here. It's got integrated winglets and a lot of bikes nowadays have them. It's just, who does it better? I think the ones on the Aprilia are massive and crazy looking. The ones on the Ducati kind of stick out a little bit. They don't really have any context to them. Like, why are they there? They function, they work, sure. But these ones are beautifully done. You think the Japanese did the best aesthetically pleasing wings? Huh. With any bike, I talk about the brakes. The Brembo Stylema calibers, uh, they're good. <laughs> What's really cool about them is they don't have a crazy initial bite, so when you touch them, you don't lurch. They have a very, very strong progressive feel, and I love that. Now that I've been to the track more, I'm actually growing to appreciate that aspect of brakes, and these are super confidence inspiring. You can stay on them and rely on them, and they're gonna do their job beautifully. Something about the CBR that I wasn't a huge fan of that I'm kind of curious of what it would be when you actually really push the bike and you wanna lean off of it is the way this tank feels. A lot of bikes, your legs get sucked up into them. You can see there's a curve into them. And then at the top, there's a spot where you lock your outside leg in when you're leaned over. Because of the way this tank's shaped right here, it actually feels like it pushes your leg out and around. That is probably one of my biggest quirks about it is just the way this tank feels. You don't feel like you're sitting in the bike. You feel like you're definitely around it because it is a little girthy in the midsection here. When I mentioned the compactness of the CBR, it's not so much that it's uncomfortable and that you feel like your, your knees are up in your ears and your hands are by your butt or anything crazy like that. The way I would equate this CBR is in between an RS V4 and my Ducati V4. The V4 has got a lot of leg room. There's, there's a lot of real estate. There's a good stretch to the arms. Whereas the Aprilia, your knees are almost way up here. You're, when you tuck in, your elbows are literally touching your knees. I think I have videos of my elbows touching my knees when I'm tucked in. So it's that in-between of those two machines, which, you know, I've seen reviews of people saying the, the foot peg is actually really high. I don't think it's that bad. But again, my perspective is from an RSV4 coming off of that to hop in on this. Put a little more context to it is I'm six foot. So something, a bike like this, I, I don't feel like I'm just all bundled up and I can't move around. There's good space, it's just, you can feel that there's not a lot of space between here and here. A little side note, these foot pegs, they're kind of slippery. You know, like they got some teeth on them, but I don't know, I change them out there from the factory. They're not the best. They're again, almost like the 1199s where we step on and go, whoop, slip right off. What an experience. I'm so grateful to go AZ Motorcycles here in Scottsdale. It, they had this motorcycle in the showroom hadn't been ridden, it's literally been pushed around and that's it. And I'm the first person to actually ride this thing, obviously other than the two people doing the PDIs, but that's pretty special. And I am very grateful for them allowing me to take this brand new beast out. If y'all are interested in this motorcycle, it is for sale here at GoAZ. Check them out, go online, put the links down below. Hit up Brian McLean, he's the one that I've talked to the most with this motorcycle and the sales staff here is second to none. I love coming here. This is actually where I brought my first Ducati. With that, I hope you enjoy this very deep dive into the Honda CBR 1000 RR SP Fireblade because whew, all the name says how awesome it is. So with that, you all have a good one. I'm out. Fan of my eyes. I just noticed I'm like, has around 20. <laughs> I don't know how to word this. Mm -hmm. Are you an average size guy? I am not an average size guy, as my wife just asked. I know you want to know what that means. Just them above average. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm at. This wasn't the right way to go. There's a valve. That valve is what turns the fun on and off. What an experience. I am so grateful to go AZ Arizona. Shit. What an experience. I'm so grateful to go Arizona. No, oh, god damn it. If you all are if you all are interested in this motorcycle, it is for sale here at Go Arizona. Oh, why can't I say go AZ?